So take out your notes from Friday as well, and then we're going to look at today's. But I'm just going to talk a little bit about what is binomial expansion to make sure you understand that it's really not as hard as it appears. Because it appears really long and tedious and, oh my gosh, really? But I don't do it the way that they do it, really. You have to know the formula for the last two problems, but otherwise, I just use Pascal's triangle. You understood Pascal's triangle, right? That's easy. So if I make Pascal's triangle, you start with a 1, and then it's 1, 1. You can remember that, right? Top of Pascal's triangle, and this is important, everybody with me, is 1, 1, 1. So this is if I, my exponent, listen, if my exponent there was 0, then it's the 0th row, which is the top row. And then if my exponent is 1, my coefficients are going to be 1 and 1. Like, for example, if I have a plus b to the 1, isn't that just a plus b? This is on the notes from Friday on the first page. So my co can you see that my coefficients are indeed 1 and 1? Right? And then what happens in the next row? It's 1 and 1, but what's the middle term? How do I get it? 1 plus 1. And so then the next one is 1 and 1, and what's my next term? 3 and 3. So this is if my exponent was 2. This is if my exponent was 3. And so if you want to write exponent, this is your exponent right here. So the next row is 1 and 1, and then what's this number? 4, and then this number? I think it's easy, even if you have an exponent of 12, I think it's easy on your test to go off to the side and draw Pascal's triangle down to the 12th row versus doing all that other stuff. Did you see what you have to do on that other stuff? That, like if you go to the very last page? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Like this thing? On the last page, this thing? So this right here is your coefficient. So if you want to make a note that right here, these are your coefficients, see Pascal's triangle. So you don't really have to do that. You might have to do this. This is what, mk minus 1. There he is, the one that ruined you for life. No. Yeah, and so the only time you have to use this crazy formula right here is when you get down into um, like those two. Otherwise, you can just use Pascal's triangle. Yep. So how would we use Pascal's triangle? Yeah, K minus 1. And then this is a little K minus 1. <laughs> a good question. K is the Kth term. So, like, K is 3. And N is your exponent. So, see how N is your exponent right here? N is your exponent, K is your whatever term it asks you to find. So on the bottom, it would be like, your number 7 would be uh, 9 over 3 minus 1. Yes. So it would be 9, 2. And then you have to use that formula on the previous page. The NJ, the combination, like if you look on the previous page, this is nine things taken two at a time, and then you use that formula, and j equals n factorial over j factorial, and then n minus j factorial. Um, when you do this whole thing, when you do this problem, you do have to do this. 
you do have to do this. Unless you want to do, you probably could figure out, I haven't done it the other way, but I, I still feel like you still could use Pascal's triangle down to the ninth row. And it's actually the tenth row because you start at zero. So it goes zero row, like zero exponent. Remember what I just showed you? Like right here on Pascal's triangle, that first row is if the exponent was zero. The second row is if the exponent was one. All right, so I could keep going until this number, this exponent was nine, if this is a nine. And then that's my coefficient. You get what I'm saying? And that's just a much shorter way of doing it. I think the first time I taught it, I actually did that. <laughs> And then I caught on. I'm like, wait a minute. Why don't we just use Pascal's triangle, go down to the 12th exponent, and use those as my coefficients? OK, one thing I need to make sure that you understand before we keep going, though, is can you just do the basic one? Can you just do that? Do you know how to expand it where it's a to the fifth, and then you do a, b, a, b, a, B, and then this counts down until you get to zero. And then this will just be a B, because the A is to the zero. So the A counts down. What does the B do? Counts up. But then we need our coefficients. We've got to go down to the fifth row or the fifth exponent. So it's going to be 1 and 1. What's our number going to be? Good. 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Okay, so if you want to, if you're putting the little exponents, let me put a little dividing line here, because those are just my exponents over there. All right, so then we have 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Do you get it? Do you get how to do that then? That's the answer. Uh -huh. That's all you have to do on that one, yes? On that one. Now if we go back, will you ever get what? Yes. Yes. On this one you get a so on here, instead of using A and B, I'm going to use X and Y. So X is 2A, and Y is negative 3. And again, what are my coefficients going to be? My coefficients are going to be 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. We're on the last page, back to number 5. Got it? So here's your exponent, or coefficients, I mean. You, you don't? No. no, what I, just, you know how to get it, right? Do you know how to get the triangle? Well, as soon as you get, like, well, first of all, in your homework paper, you can just use it off your notes. But when you're on a test, as soon as you get the test, draw Pascal's triangle down to about the sixth row. And then if you need to go to the twelfth row, go to the twelfth row. It's, really, it's much easier. Would you rather do that or would you rather do this? <laughs> That's fair. That's honest. But if you had to pick, I would rather do Pascal's triangle. If, maybe. Did you have one in your homework? You'd have to go look. I don't write these. I don't make it. I just keep it. I could, but I don't. Tenth the highest? Yeah, see, so you can go down to the tenth row. That's no big deal. Okay, so make yourself a whole little paper. No big deal. All right, so now what you're going to do is, this is, um, what I do is I go ahead and just use X and Y. I don't use the 2A and the negative 3 just to keep it straight. If you're good at keeping stuff straight, then you can go ahead and just do what you need to do. So we're doing, again, to the fifth power. So we have our X to the fifth power, and then we're going to have um, X, Y, X, Y, I just write a whole bunch of X, Y's. And then I just start counting down on my X. And then this 
supposed to be zero, so I don't need that one. I don't know. <laughs> well, we're not going to worry about that yet. And then count up. So now I need my coefficients in there, right? I'm just using x is 2a and y is negative 3. Are you with me? To simplify it. And then I'm going to put my coefficients in there. So now what can I do to get my actual answer? Plug in your 2a and plug in your negative 3. Of course. That's, that would be like a 20-point question, and you just got maybe the first four points out of 20. <laughs> oh, but it's not that simple, right? Has anybody done it? No. Yeah, because he probably did this. I did, I did too the first time I taught it. Because I didn't realize about it's just much easier to do the Pascal triangle. You have to know how to do that, but not for these two problems. You have to know how to do that for this problem, which we'll get to in a second. All right, so let's go ahead and plug that in. So we have 2a to the fifth plus 5 times 2a to the fourth times negative 3 plus 10 times 2a to the third. I'm sorry. It's just long. It's not really hard. <laughs> Me. I wish I knew right off the top of my head. I don't know today, but I can tell you. Um, I don't have one right off the top of my head. I fail in that right now. Sorry. All right, so did everybody get this far? All right, did he already do this one the other way? Yeah. All right, and so then here you would get 2 to the 5th is 32. A to the 5th, you would get 5 times 2 to the 4th, which is 5 times 16 times negative 3. And what's, I actually have it here in front of me. I'm going to cheat. 240. Yep, minus 240. A to the 4th, what is it? Uh, like if I multiply 2 cubed is 8, times 10 is 80, times 9, 80 times 9 is 720. Wow. Okay, but you have to. Okay, and then what's the next one? You had missed some of the, you had missed probably 4 of the 20 points or something like that. Okay, what's the next one? Negative 1,080. A squared plus 810A minus 243. All right, so what I want you to do on the next one, now that you've seen it, number six, I want you to define them. And since this is an X and Y, yep, you can do it. So since this one's an X and Y, I would label them as A and B. So what is A? Good. So A equals X squared. And B equals what? Negative 5Y. And what are my coefficients going to be if I look back at Pascal's triangle on the first page? No, you can just write it on the front of your test as soon as you get your test. That's all I have to do. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then you just keep referring to it. Or you can write it like on a piece of notebook paper if you want to keep using it for every page as soon as you get your test. Yep. As long as you don't have it before the test starts. All right, now I would use A and B. I would do this step right here with A and B. So you start out with A, and you end with B, and everything in the middle is AB. You just have to figure out your exponent. 
So you're going to start with A, and you're going to end with B. And if it's the four, does this always work? I think this always works. But if it's, if it's a fourth to the fourth power, aren't you always going to have one more term than what it says? Like in this last one, do we have six terms? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, you're always going to have one more term than that. So I'm going to have, say it again. The last one has seven. Six. One, two, three, four. Five, six terms. Yeah, sorry. So this is going to have five terms, so I'm going to have uh, three AB terms in the middle. But every other one is going to be negative, so I'm not going to put the positive or negative yet. Yeah, why is it going to be negative? Yeah, because you got the negative 5Y. We can just do a plus for now and we'll deal with the negative later, I guess. Okay, so we start out with a 4 on the A and then the, that counts down. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think it's fabulous. <laughs> I know, people think I'm worried, it's okay. Hmm. All right, and then you just substitute in, right? Is everybody okay? Any questions to hear? Anybody need me to re-explain that? Where you just count up on your A and you count down on your, or you count down on your A and you count up on your B. Okay? Now you just, oh, and then you put your coefficients in. Put your 1, your 4, your 6, your 4, and your one, and that's from Pascal's triangle. Unless you want to do that really fun and zero and one thing. That's so fun to do five million times. All right. So then you just plug in x squared to the fourth is I'm just gonna write it. And then we have x squared cubed times negative five y plus six times x squared squared, x squared squared, and then negative 5y squared plus 4 times x squared times negative 5y cubed plus negative 5y to the fourth. And then you simplify it. No, you can do it. It's not that hard. You multiply. Power to a power, you multiply. Good question. X to the 8, yep. So we're going to have X to the 8. And then don't forget we have this negative 5 times 4. So we're going to have negative 20. X to the 6, Y. See where I got negative 20? 4 times the negative 5. So it's negative 20 x to the 6, because squared cubed. Plus, or minus, actually. No, it'll be plus. But you got the negative 5 is squared. So this is really 25. So it's going to be 150. Right? I know. I don't. I know I don't make these. I wish I had more space myself. I'm like, dear Lord, I need more space. And then y squared. And then negative 5 cubed would be what? Negative 125. So you can just use your calculator to do negative 125 times 4. What is it? Where did the 150 come from? Uh, 25. 25 times 6. Got it? And then now we're doing negative 125 times 4 is what? 500. And then we got x squared, y cubed. Um, because when your, y, when your negative is to an odd power, it stays negative. 
when you're in an odd, like one, three, fraud. So if you're negative, her question was, how do you know if it's positive or negative? If your negative is to an odd power, it's going to stay negative. But if your negative is to an even power, it goes positive. OK, last one is what? It would be positive. 5 to the 4th is what, 6.5? Yeah. 6.5, good job. Y to the 4th. And that's your answer. Would that make it a little bit easier? Yeah, it didn't make it easier. It didn't make it easier, but not easy. That's fair. OK, now when we get to number 7, 7 is where you need to use your formula, and you just use that formula up there. So you just write k equals 3, and n equals 9. And then you plug it into the formula. Look up here. Now you plug it into the formula. So we're going to do 9 taken 2 at a time because k minus 1. Does everybody see the formula up at the top? Everybody see where I get the 2? k minus 1. And then you do a. Wait, a is x. a is x to the n minus k minus 1. What then? Minus, what's k minus 1? 9 minus 2 is 7. And then times 4, which is our b, because a is x, b is 4, and then 4 to the k minus 1. And what's k minus 1? 2. So the only thing we have to do is figure out what is our 9 taken 2 at a time. And that's the formula on the previous page. So flip back to the formula on the previous page. Good question. It means 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That's what the little explanation means. But there is a button on the calculator. But you need to know how to cancel things out, though. So make sure you really understand what you're doing. And then over, so the formula is, I don't even have it memorized. Is it J factorial, which is 2 factorial? And then 9 minus 2, which would be 7 factorial. So really, this right here is really what? That's 7 factorial that cancels. 1. Thirty-six? Thirty-six. Over two times one. It does, but look, Tyler. Like, if you just write it out like this. Okay, I have nine factorial. Okay, stop talking, please. You have nine factorial over two, seven. So really, I can change that formula on the previous page. It's like n factorial over j factorial n minus j. So this is your 9 minus 2. So this n is 9, and j is 2. So I'm going to change 9 factorial. Everybody should be listening. It's for Tyler, but some of the rest of you should listen. So the 7 factorial is cancel. And you're left with 9 times 8 over 2 factorial is just 2 times 1. 36. Right. So your answer is um, 36 times 16, which is 576, I believe, x to the 7. Got it? Mm -hmm. That's how you do. See the four squared is sixteen? I just changed four squared to sixteen. Oh, what? That thirty six should go to the front of it. 
times 16. Got it? Okay, last one on Friday. Number eight. Okay, so in number eight, we want to find K. I believe we're trying to find K. I don't remember. I have to think through how I figured this out. But to get X to the 12th, and we have that our A is X squared, what does our power need to be on this term? Six. But we're starting at nine. But we're starting at nine, so we're starting at like our a to the nine plus a to the eight b plus a to the seventh b squared plus a to the six. Hold on, I okay, I had to figure this out myself. So what term are we at in order for the a to be to the six? What term is that? The fourth term. So our k is what? is four, that's why I did that. Yep. No, the answer isn't four. They want to know what the actual term is. Not one number term. Now we gotta find the term. Yep. Okay, so see how it starts at a to the ninth? And then you count down at nine, eight, seven, six, and we're trying to get to six because our a is really x squared, and so to get x to the twelfth that has to be to the sixth power. Do you agree? Yeah. So we're trying to find the whole, the actual term. We're trying to find, we're going to plug it in that formula. Yes. 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 There you go. So we're using our formula up here at the top. Everybody go to the formula at the top. We have n. What's our n? Nine, so we have nine, and then k minus one is three, and then we have x squared is our a to the power of six, and then our negative three is going to be to the power of three. Because it's three because if I were write my terms out, it counts up. So the term that has the sixth power has b to the three. And now you just do it, right? So you do nine factorial over three factorial, six factorial, x to the twelfth times negative twenty-seven because negative 3 cubed is negative 27. And so I can change my 9 factorial to 9 times 7 times 6, or 9 times 8, sorry. Right, because the 6 factorial cancels, good. And so now, and what I did was, and then you got 3 times 2 times 1. And so you can just take 9 times 8 times 7 divided by 6. I want to say that one is 84? 84, okay. 84 times negative 27. X to the 12. The 9 times 8 times 7 divided by 3 times 2 times 1 is 84. Negative 27 is negative 3 cubed. Oh, got it? Negative 2268 x to the 12. Yeah, that was Friday. Now we got today. Uh, correct that. Correct that. Um, the 27. Negative 3 cubed. Today's is easy, though. Today's isn't like this. Negative 3 cubed. No, seriously. From your perspective, it's easy. I promise. I promise. So 84 is what? 84 is what you get when you divide this by this. Yeah. Yeah.
So it's 84 times x to the 12 times negative 27. And then I just wrote it in a different order. Got it? All right, so notes on S2. Okay, so we're getting into uh, binomial expansion. Honestly, is the hardest thing you'll do in this unit. That part right there. So this is actually pretty simple because we're just doing sequences, and you've seen sequences before. <laughs> and whenever you see a, like a1, a2, that's just like the first term, the second term, the third term, the fourth term. And if I give you a formula and I say find the first five terms, that just means find when n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, n equals 5, and just plug that into your formula. So a1 equals 2 times 1 minus 7. Right? I just plug my 1 in for n. Chance that you're with me? Because this is easy stuff. So what is 2 times 1 minus 7? Oh, it would be 2 minus 14. You can do that. Two minus, no, well, you can do that. He distributed the 2. Okay. I did the parentheses first and got negative 6 times 2. But it's okay. You can distribute. It doesn't matter. Same answer. Okay, so find a2. And then find a3, then find a4, then find a5. You do it. This is easy stuff. Right? You just plug in. Now you just plug in 2 for n, then plug in 3 for n, then plug in 4 for n, etc. Yeah. And at some point, maybe when you get to, what's this, negative 10? So do you see a pattern, though, starting to happen here? Right. So once you see the pattern, it's okay to just write the pattern. But it usually takes the three or four of them to find the pattern. Yep, that's it. Did I put a two right there? Oh, uh, yeah. They're all, well... No, because we're going to see some tomorrow that I think are neither. All right, what about the next one? Do the next one. Again, the first five terms. That's all you had to do. Okay, so what's negative one to the one? Negative one, right? And then two minus one is? On the bottom, 2 minus 1, 1. So our first term is negative 1. Okay, find the second term. Got it? And then do A2. Yeah, so it's negative 1 squared over 2 times 2 minus 1. What's negative 1 squared? Is it positive 1 or negative 1? Positive. So it's going to be 1 over what? And then do A3. This one's a harder pattern to see. What's negative 1 cubed? Is that negative or positive? Negative. When it's odd, it's going to be negative. When it's even, it's going to be positive. So five. Can anybody guess what the next one's going to be? Negative or positive? It's going to be positive one seventh. Because it's when it's negative one to the n, it changes. The um, odd ones are going to be negative, and the even ones are going to be positive. And then the next one's going to be negative one ninth, right? because the bottom keeps increasing by 2. All right, now let's try to go the other way, number 2. Number 2, try to write a formula, your a to the n formula. And this is your 
This is your first term, your second term, your third term. Or actually, that would be your N, right? So what's our A to the N formula? Good. So then it says find A12. So what's it going to be? So far, so good? No. <laughs> so here, N is 1, N is 2, N is 3, N is 4. This is our A1, our A2, our A3, our A4. So how do we take our N and change it into our AN? Good. So A N equals you just double hundred that out. <laughs> yeah, and you could just see that if you double it and then add one. So he saw that you could just double the N and add one and he just figured it out. You'll see it later, there's an actual way to do it systematically with a formula, but all right, so what's A twelve? Two times twelve plus one is twenty-five. Okay. So far easier. Okay, next page. So how can we get one every single time, but it changes? Negative one to the what? To the end. Good job. So negative one to the twelfth. Will that be positive or negative? If it's even, it's positive. If it's odd, it's negative. So how in the world can we get it to start out with a put a negative in front of the parentheses? Will that work? It might work. There's another way that's like more consistent. We can do negative one to the n plus. Does that make sense? Why can't you just, yeah, like just multiply by negative one? I think that because it's going to be a, a geometric sequence. Is it geometric? Yeah, you're going to learn tomorrow about geometric, not tomorrow, but the next day about geometric sequences, and it needs to be in the power. You have to do it in the power. No, because the negative exponent puts it, it makes it a fraction. Remember, negative exponents makes it a fraction. That's a good question. All right, so then you do negative 1 to the 13th is going to be what? Negative 1. All right, so what we're focusing on today is arithmetic sequences. Tomorrow, uh, the day after tomorrow, we'll talk about geometric. And arithmetic, are you with me? Arithmetic is kind of like a linear, a linear function. Remember linear functions, they always increase by the same amount, and that's your slope. And so you would get y equals mx. There's a connection here between y equals mx plus b, where this is your uh, common difference. Here they're calling it a common difference, but that's really your rate of change. Common difference. I went back north for five days, so it's probably even worse. Okay, so the common difference is kind of the same thing as your slope. So if you want to make a note that this is the same as your like rate of change, your slope. And so you've got A2 minus, you can write, you, you can just take A2 minus A1 and that's your D. So what's our D for 3A? Our common difference is what? 3. So then you just add 3, add 3. Good. And our common difference here would be negative 5. So it would be 25, 20. Easy? I don't know. Oh. 
<laughs> we are getting into geometric sequence today. I didn't ask, I was thinking that was later. No. Okay, so listen. So geometric sequence is R. R is, listen, Y or A. Let me use A, not Y, sorry. A2 divided by A1. So just write that down. R is A2. A2, like the second A divided by the first A. So what's our R for A? R, R, R. Three. So what's the next term? How could I get my next term? Multiply by three. 162. Sure. And then times by three. 486. Thank you. What's R for B? What's R for B? Good. Take A2 divided by A1. 80. And so this one would be negative 2.5. Okay, do the last page real quick. Yeah. So the first one, what's the next two terms? What's the next two terms in that sequence? Is there a common difference or a common ratio? If you actually take A2 and divide it by A1 and then A3 and divide it by A2, they have to be the same and they wouldn't be the same. So it's um, neither. What? Neither. There's not a common difference or a common ratio, so it says, is it arithmetic, geometric, or neither? And this one, the ratio isn't consistent. It has to be consistent. What about this one? Is there a consistent ratio or a consistent difference? Good. So D, we have a common difference, not a common ratio. So the next term would be 5 halves and then 3. And is it arithmetic or geometric? Arithmetic. 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 All right. And then C. I'll tell you, you're going to find R. Anybody know what the R is just by looking at it? I'll tell you D is neither, if you're still here. D is neither. <laughs> and how are your brains? Are they useless now for the rest of the day? <laughs> Boy, you got through it all. Take care of your calculator. Pete? Sorry, that was completely me throwing calculators at you. Not on purpose. My dear.